We thank you for Jason and his team, Lord. We ask you to anoint them and bless them as they bring us into your throne, into your presence tonight. We honor you, Lord. It's all about you, Lord Jesus. And you are the one who is worthy of all our praise and all glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship.
Let the way of Jesus lead us back where we belong. Let your way of Jesus lead us back where we belong. Your home. You are home. Build my house upon a
silent retreat and I was reflecting on the passage where Jesus speaks to blind man Barnabas and he asks he says what can I do for you I want you to just put your hands out like this and just receive that question from the Lord tonight Jesus speaks to us and says what can I do for you The retreat director said, go back to your room tonight. It was all of us men said, kneel down at your bedside like when you were a little boy and just begin to allow Jesus to ask you that question and then answer it. Tell him what he can do for you. And I remember instead of asking Jesus, hearing him ask me and then answering, I, I started arguing with Jesus. I started saying, Jesus, why did you ask blind man Barnabas what you could do for him? I mean, isn't it obvious? He's been blind his whole life. Jesus didn't feel the need to answer me. <laughs> so I went to bed. And like Jesus often does, the whisper the wind of the spirit came at about three in the morning and I could get up and write down what Jesus answered or I could go to bed and forget it forever you ever had those moments and I remember it just blew by me about three in the morning and I got up and wrote it down I asked him the same reason that I ask you Jason because I don't want to just fix humanity I want to know you. Understand that? This is the power of Jesus. Jesus doesn't just wave his hand over all your problems. He says, what do you need from me? What can I do for you? Do you even know you're blind? Do you even want to be healed? Remember those boys on the boat that night that the waters were crashing over the boat and Jesus is sleeping? It seems almost impossible, doesn't it? <laughs> Jesus is sleeping and the boys are terrified and the winds and the waves are crashing over the boat. The boys come running to Jesus. They wake him up, they're frustrated with Jesus. How could you be sleeping? We're gonna die out here. These wind and waves, they're crashing over the boat. Jesus wakes up and he calms the winds and the waves and he says, you know, it gives them a little scolding, right? About their faith and... I was reading that passage one day shortly after that, writing this song, and I immediately, my mind saw the parallel inverted passage. I, I, it was like I'm reading the passage and I said, I've seen this scenario somewhere else in the scripture, but I don't know where. And then it came to me. Gethsemane. 
I start to look at this passage of Gethsemane and there Jesus is, something eternal is going on. Wind and waves are crashing. And Jesus can't sleep, but the disciples can't stay up for it. This is what Jesus is raising up in the earth. If you want to be a prophetic people, go to sleep to what Jesus is asleep to. And stay awake to what Jesus is awake to. Being a prophetic people, see, we're not a wind and waves people. We're a what is Jesus up to people. So we say that and we declare it. You know me by my name. Every empire knows us by a number, but what? He knows me by my name. We're not a number to Jesus. We're the sons and daughters of a living God. Who knows us by our name? Declare that out tonight. Be with 
This is our home. Yeah. From the mountain to the valley, from the desert. Silence or the city street, your presence always covers me. Sing that with me from the mountain to the valley, from the desert to the raging sea, in the silence or the city street. By your promises, the words you have spoken, desires you have placed in me, faithfully you will complete.
presence always covers me. You ever have those moments, you know, when I don't know what steps to take? How about that? Huh? When I don't know what moves to make. There's one thing I can't escape Your love When I don't have the words to say When I can't seem to find my way There's one thing I can't escape Your love From the mountain to the valley, from the desert to the raging sea, from the silence or the city street, your presence always covers me. thought it's a holy thing to be wild and free and, uh, mm -hmm. it's a hard song to write you know what I mean how do you write that not make it like heretical or something you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a holy thing kind of hard to sing even. Just try it. It's a holy thing to be wild and free. Like a raging storm on the calmest sea. Lord, heal my heart until my heart believes. I'm going to sing that one more time. Lord, heal my heart until my heart believes. It's the only thing to be wild and free. Yes, it is. It's a sacred space to be lost in wonder, to safely read in mystery. Lord, fill my heart until it's full of hunger. It's all.
is wild Our God is full of mystery Our God is freedom Our God is full of destiny His love has borders that I will never reach It's our only thing to be wild and free It's our only thing to be wild and free It is, it's our only thing to be wild says in Colossians, this beautiful passage I was reading. In fact, there's this beautiful little thing I wrote, read to the guys tonight. Uh, oh, how about this, this little guy? Ken Bailey says this. He says, repentance is acceptance, is the acceptance of being found. Repentance is the acceptance of being found. <laughs> We're going to sing tonight, Seek First. And I love singing Seek First. I want to seek and find God wherever I can. So many times I wake up in the morning and I see the bright wonder of my children. And if I deny the glory of Christ and little Oliver waking me up in the morning, acting like I'm pursuing Christ, I'm missing the whole thing. I want to have eyes open to see the glory of Jesus. The earth is filled with the glory of God, Abraham Joshua Heschel said. And humanity can't handle the glory of God. So what do we do? We create routines. And routine is resistance to wonder. So the earth is filled with the glory of God. We don't sing like Baal worshipers tonight. We sing like Jesus worshipers tonight. Does that mean that says... I sing like God's here. But the question that will transform our cities is not how loud we sing that we'll trust God, but that we actually do. We have every reason 
to shout and dance and sing and praise and cry out, but we have no need to. It's not what brings God here. Oftentimes, it's what gets us here. This is what Paul says to Colossians. You've come to Jesus, and for this reason, since the very day we heard it, we do not cease to pray for you. That's something. I read this to the guys tonight, just thinking about this. If we're going to cease from anything in our world, you know, think about all the Christian brothers. I just think about this lineup right here, these friends of mine. I've got guys that aren't here tonight, girls that played with me for years. Can I say that for their faith that I never cease to pray for them? I want you to think about your church members or your family members or people you know. I'm not talking about the people that don't know Jesus. They need to find Jesus too. I'm talking about the people that do. In our world, this is what he says. I never cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding and that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. You know the only shameful thing? It's not shameful. I don't feel ashamed, but it's convicting. I should have this memorized, don't you think? This should be a prayer I'm praying for everybody I know that's a follower of Jesus. But often we fill our time, right, with words of judgment, with words of criticism. And he says this, I know you know Jesus and I'm praying every day you pray for your spouse that they would be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding and that you may be you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing and being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, God strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints in the light. Need I say even more? Should we go on? This is unbelievable, isn't it? Raise your hands to heaven. And this is what we pray for you. That you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He's delivered us from the power of darkness and has conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. I love what John says in the Gospel of John. And nothing that has been created was created without him. That our very beginning tonight of every moment of this evening, we begin in Jesus. Our beginning is in Jesus. Every day I told the guys, I said, I don't know where we're going tonight, but I know this, our beginning is in Jesus. It wasn't a cliche. I don't say it every night. I don't read that verse every night. It's tonight. Our beginning is in Jesus, and nothing that was created was created apart from him. Everything that was created was created through him. Colossians takes it further and created for him you were created for God that's amazing you're just not a number you're a name and you were created by a living God you were shaped and formed by the very hands of God 
this is what, this is what, it's not just Jonah in the Bible that even in the running, even in the resistance, you're still on the wheel of God. God isn't a machine or a press that could care less about his creation. God is a potter who knows you by name, loves the creation. Even in your resistance, he reverences you and shapes and forms you. Think about, think about Peter arguing with Jesus. I'm not going to deny you. And Jesus says, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when you have returned, you will strengthen your brothers. The whole beautiful, I keep seeing this on your, on your sign. Your sign looks like an O. It looks like a circle to me. The little insignia on church, Liberty. The sign, I keep seeing an O. I remember I was teaching my daughter Lucy was learning how to write in cursive they still do this at this school they're writing cursive and she was she was learning to write the word love and I was having a coffee and reading something and she was over there writing on one of those things with the lines and she was writing and writing and writing and writing, and writing practicing for school and all of a sudden she says hey daddy look she says love has a hole in it and I, it took me a few seconds. I said, oh, man. Because initially I thought, man, that'd be an amazing country song. You know what I mean? Love's got a hole in it. That's amazing. And then I, I saw it. And the more I thought about that, I saw that O oh, in the word love. And I began to see that O oh, come flash into my memory, what Lucy said to me. Over and over as I read the Gospels, I kept seeing, even through all the scriptures, I kept seeing all these circles that God was making all through the scripture one of my favorites that we get to see the whole story i mean jacob of course is a massive journey frederick peekner called it the magnificent defeat you know this whole process of god getting a hold of a man but how about peter he starts off there jesus is trying to preach he can't catch any fish that's how the whole beginning begins no coincidence that after the denial, Jesus comes back to him fishing again and he can't catch fish again. It's the same thing. This is a beautiful story. Jesus is walking on the beach almost as if to say, it's okay. Hey boys, why don't you cast your nets on the other side? Remember the first time he said that? They caught so many fish, it was breaking the net. Why don't you cast your nets on the other side? The Bible says Peter doesn't even recognize the voice of Jesus. I got thinking about this this afternoon, praying for who would be here tonight. I wonder, has the shame and condemnation taken your life over so much that you can't recognize his voice anymore? I know that's the way it is for me. I remember one time I was so filled with condemnation because, you know, people say mean things in this world and feeling taken in those words. And I remember one night I've been teaching my son Oliver. I, I wrote a song about this called It's Raining Today and I Don't Know Why. I'm waiting on the sun to open up the sky. Maybe today he'll give it a try. And maybe he'll just leave it alone. It, it was kind of the depressing kind of psalmic song, you know what I mean? And, uh, but I got all the way to the end of that song. Up here in Milwaukee, we got summer on our minds, like California, you know, <laughs> and, our, and our dreams are filled to places where it's summer all the time. But death and resurrection are not options by design, for every garden has its season and every season has its sign. And I was trying to get this last verse created and I was feeling this, and all of a sudden, I couldn't hear or see Jesus in my life. I was missing all the glory moments. But I've been teaching my son this, Oliver, he's my youngest. I would grab him by the face and instead of just saying, Oliver, I love you, go to bed. I pray Jesus' blessings on you, but go to bed quick. I've been saying this to him, I'd look him in the eye and I'd say, Oliver, you're my son. 
and I love you. Try it sometime as a dad with your son. It's, it's awkward the first time, especially if you start doing it with your son when they're older. Because that's what I did with Sam. I was like 14. And it's like, okay. <laughs> but it's wonderful. And now my boys love it. Oliver, you're my son. I love you. And I remember I was writing that song up here in Milwaukee. We got summer on our minds and our dreams are filled to places where it's summer all the time. But death and resurrection are not options by design. For every garden has its season and every season has its sign. I walk up to put Oliver to bed. It was the rainiest of days, if you know what I mean, metaphorically. I walk in, I'm going to bless him, put him to bed, tell him he's my son, that I love him. He runs up to me, he's four years old at the time. He grabs my cheeks, and he looks me in the eyes, and he says, Daddy, Jesus loves you. And I immediately not only did it break my heart and open me up to the Lord at that moment prophetically, but I went downstairs, got on the piano after I put him to bed, and I had the last verses. Jesus loves me, this I know. My little boy just told me so like a preacher from the days of old, reminding me to never let go because it's a long road that we journey on and it's a long road till we're finally home and God's got a season when it falls like rain and God's got a reason for everything. Why do I say that? Because by him and for him you were created. He declares over Peter and he declares over us even when we cannot hear his voice anymore, when our hearts have been almost frozen, when we cannot cry anymore. We need the John the Beloveds to say, that's Jesus. That's what happens in John 21. John recognizes Jesus' voice, and Peter doesn't walk on the water. He dives in the water and swims to shore. And there, you know, there's only two coal fires in the whole of the Bible where Peter denied Jesus and where Jesus reinstates him. So let's go back to that passage of the circle in the love of God. Right in the middle of all of that journey of Peter, and there's so much there that's really a sermon, not a little interpolation within a song, right? But Jesus says something. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when you have returned to me, will strengthen your brothers. Now, most text, it will say, the editors, because they try to help us, it will say, Jesus predicts Peter's denial. It's so much better news than that. It is, I guess, if you want to look at it, has, have, have, you know, have the glass half empty, right? But this is the way I see it. Jesus predicts Peter's return. How about you with your city? How about you with your family? How about you with your home? How about you with those relatives you don't like? <laughs> by him, through him, for him, we are created. It's a holy thing to be wild and free. Yeah. So come on, everybody. So come on, everybody. Oh, and come on, everyone. Run like a river. Run like a river. Oh
last thing we are shaped and formed by the hand of God no height no height no depth could ever separate us the greater the distance the greater Every table is an altar. Mm. Every breath is a gift from you. Every moment is a treasure. Mm. Every day.
to let our hearts be away, be away. Let our hearts be away, be away. Let our hearts, let our hearts be away, be away. Let our hearts, let our hearts. ourselves, Lord, as worshipers in the cities and the homes where we live. Thank you that, Jesus, you do speak to us. Lord, may we have a heart to receive all that it is you're saying.
my faith is prone to fear Oh, remind me of your love Remind me that you never let me go Let's just sit on that for a second, guys What you whisper in my ear Let it find room and like a garden, let your words begin to grow. And when my faith is prone to fear, oh, remind me of your love. Yeah, remind me that you never let me go. I was meeting with, we're going to go back into that, and we're going to sing it out with all of our hearts. But we're going we're gonna to play some context there. I was, we, we were writing that song, a friend of mine, and we knew we wanted some sort of bridge, or we had to go somewhere in the prayer. And so I, I happened that morning to be meeting with this missionary friend of mine in a place of the world where there are no missionaries, and there are no pastors, and there are no churches except for the fact that he's a missionary and a pastor over 487 churches in a place where there are no missionaries and there are no churches and there are no pastors. It's a deadly, fearful place. He, he raised four children while doing this. I asked him, I have four kids. I said, were you ever scared? He said, oh yeah. He said, lots of times. I mean, here we are in Cedarburg, Wisconsin, where you don't even have to lock your doors, you know what I mean? I said, are you, were you ever scared? He said, oh yeah. He said, but then I realized something, Jason. For three years, I never planted one church. I really didn't meet anybody. People would tell me terrible stories about things happening. And I let all that anxiety steal my life of prayer. Not the supplication kind where you ask God for things, but the other kind where you're present to what God's doing, what he's saying. He said, I never did anything. I just literally, my life became imprisoned and trapped by anxiety and fear about things that would never happen. Thomas Merton's famous for saying a man can climb a ladder his entire life only to reach the top and find out it's facing the wrong wall. He said, I felt like I was on that ladder, Jason. This is what he said. He said, and I, I realized something. It takes a lot of faith to be afraid, Jason. Now, you know you're hearing something prophetic generally. You know, that's a wonderful idea, isn't it? My friend wrote that line. Tell me words I thought I'd never hear. I said, Ben, that is a romantic line. And it's wonderful. And every time we sing it, we think that. We think the romantic side, the wonderful side. Oh, tell me, Lord, that I'm so awesome. And God does tell us that we're awesome and that he loves us. But he also speaks to us in words that are radically opposed to our own voice. Radically opposed to our own way of thinking. Often radically opposed on all sides to even our politics. Jesus speaks right to it. He speaks in a voice that's radically, he's, sometimes he's a stranger wrestling with us in the night. A lot of times the things, when, when God really is speaking, this is how I often am. Generally, I already know what's being talked about when I'm like, woo, yeah! But when God speaks to me, it often comes as a strange word. This is what he said to me. I knew it was prophetic because I'd never heard that before. If you Google it, you'll never find it. You'll just find me talking about this. 
Why? Because this phrase I've never heard anywhere. It's never been in a book. It's just a man on a mission that nobody will ever know his name. Planning 487 churches. After this event happens in his life, I realize, Jason, that it takes a lot of faith to fear. Well, what, do you, what do you mean? Yeah. He said, oh, I was putting all this faith in fear, and fear kept disappointing me over and over and over again. I'd give my nights. It started with one night, then two nights, and three nights, then a week, then two months, then a year. Three years, I never did anything completely bound by anxiety and fear, and none of those things happened. I gave my faith to fear, and fear disappointed me. It takes a lot of faith to be afraid. But he said, this is when it changed for me. I realized as I started just looking at my life, I never give hope that many chances. I give my faith to hope, and it disappoints me twice, maybe, if I'm a really faithful person, and I give up on it. I'll give my entire life to fear. I give my faith to hope for two days, and if it keeps disappointing me, I give up on hope. And he said, this is the reality, though, Jason. Fear disappoints us much more than hope. Because hope does things in the hoping, doesn't it? Hope changes your world just in the hoping. Most children are not, they don't wake up every morning at five years old hopeless. Bob Dylan's famous for saying every child has the truth in them. They just get it beat out of them before they can walk. How about you and I, right? So we sing that. We sing that. We say, Lord, remind us of your love. And we sing this verse, we say, and what you whisper in my ear, let it find room in my heart. And like a garden, let your words begin to grow. And my faith is broken.
by anxiety and fear. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hands. Just, just begin to step out from where you are and just walk down. Tormented by anxiety and fear. Borum prophesies this in one of his books. Amazing, amazing preacher. He was, a, he was a Spurgeon prodigy, and he ended up in the territory of Australia and New Zealand, and he, he didn't like expository preaching. You know, he, he loved to tell stories. And he would see things just on walks, and he would extract you very difficult to find first edition books of F.W. Born because like many artists, <laughs> people didn't buy into him in his time as much as later these books have become. I mean, it's a thousand pounds for a first edition of some of his books because they're so rarely found. But nevertheless, he'd write these stories and write and write and write. And he, he, was, he was writing walking down the street one day and he looked into a kitchen garden and he saw a scarecrow standing there he's looking at that scarecrow and he thought this is hilarious because to him it was funny he saw these two birds one bird on each of the scarecrow's arms and he looked at those birds and he thought well that's why I'm gonna give those birds names I'm gonna name this bir bird the foolish bird and I'm gonna name this bird the wise bird and he said if I was a foolish bird every time I saw a scarecrow I'd be afraid and I'd fly away but if I was a wise bird I'd fly around the countryside and the city streets just looking for a scarecrow because I know if I found myself a scarecrow, then I just found myself a beautiful garden. <laughs> I 
I wrote a song about this. It's on table one. We're not going to do it tonight. You can get it on the internet probably for free. Scarecrow. Listen to it. If I were a bird, if I were a wise bird, I'd listen to my fear and fly away from here. But if I were a bird, if I were, if I were a foolish bird, I'd, I'd listen to my fear and fly away from here. But if I were a wise bird, I'd listen to my heart and find the treasure waiting in the field. There's a treasure waiting in the field. That's why there's a scarecrow there. There's a scarecrow wherever the church bell rings, terrified by the gift she brings. We won't change nothing without suffering and even scarecrows, even scarecrows need to hear the song we sing. Let the fear be gone. Listen to the voice of Jesus. Let your fear be gone. Your child of God. Let the fear be gone. Listen to the voice of Jesus. children, I'm not going to say the, the one for obvious reasons, has been struggling with anxiety. What's interesting is that child that struggles with anxiety is the one who has the gift of prayer the most. Let the fear be gone. She's the one that every time somebody's suffering in the house, she's the one writing notes. Let the fear be gone. You're a child of God. There's a treasure waiting in the field. Let the fear be gone. I remember just sitting with our Christian counselor, and I want to promise her that everything's going to be okay when she has anxiety. And the Christian counselor saying, "Stop doing that, Dad. Stop doing it. The only, the only way for the anxiety to go away is to lift eyes to hope and see." for herself that the things that she's giving her heart and her mind to they're not real but you cannot promise that to her you cannot promise it you cannot promise if she does daddy tell me that this is all going to be okay it's all going to be okay that's not it doesn't work that way there's no announcement it's not a magic pill it's a jesus that sits with us and holds our hands is a Jesus with us in the middle of the night, in the midst of our pain, that's with us, feeling our pain. Let the fear be gone. You're a child of the living God. Let the fear be gone. There's so much to do. Let the fear be gone. I just pray for hope to arise in our hearts in our eyes thank you for prayer warriors among us thank you for artists thank you for sensitive hearts thank you for eyes that have the ability to see in faith thank you jesus
here where you're at. Just sit down. Just stay here with me. Alcoholism, addiction, Lord Jesus, set us free. Thanks, guys. Man, aren't these guys the greatest? I only... I want you to stay here. I only travel with my friends, and I have so many incredible friends, incredible musicians that come along, and it's such a gift, but so I'm just, I'm so grateful. It's so fun to be with these guys. Um, God, you have always been like Jesus. Oh God, you have always been like Jesus. We're waking up. We're waking up to the beauty you have shown us. We're waking up. We're waking up to the beauty you have shown us. I feel like that's something too with the anxiety that plagues our nation. Oh, God, it's the way we see God. You have always been like Jesus. See, forever, we didn't know what God was like. Just people would try to decide what's he like. But then Jesus came. And now we do. We know what Jesus is. We know what God's like because Jesus came. Remind me. Let the fear be gone even in that area. Anxiety even in that area. Words spoken. It's not just these up in the front. It's the whole room. Words spoken. Even acting as if we have a God that's absent. If we cry and scream loud enough, maybe he'll come. God, you have always been like Jesus. God, you have always been like Jesus. We're waking up. God's always been like Jesus. Would you look at those birds? That's Jesus.
prophetic voice half the time speaking about agriculture and animal life. And how blessed it is. God, you have always been like Jesus. We're waking up, we're waking up to the beauty you've shown us. We want you, God. But we don't know how to relate to a God who wants to know us, who wants to love us, who wants to sit with us, who wants to spend time with us. God, you have always been like Jesus. I'm going to sing a song in a moment over us, but this is connected to here and it's connected to the whole room and it's connected to the city and it's connecting to the nation. Easy answers are easily replaced. Jesus is no easy answer. He comes to be with us, present with us, walking with us. Jesus said very little about singing to him, although I love writing songs and singing. He said a whole lot about following him, being with him, spending time with him. In the presence of a God who we can say, Dad. We can call him Father. I want to speak to one more thing tonight and we'll sing a little bit more and then be done. But it's all connected, see. Wendell Berry prophesies in a book called The Last Turn of the Crank. Another prophet, preacher, poet, agriculturalist like Jesus. In the last turn of the crank, he tells us that in the United States of America at the early part of the 1900s, one third of our nation's population were farmers who lived on the land they farmed and ate the produce from that land. By 1950, They realized something, humanity realized something, probably as an act of philanthropy in their minds. They realized that, you see, sun and rain are mercy gifts. Why? Because law is predictable and mercy is always unpredictable. So mercy doesn't make sense if you don't have law, but mercy mercy is unpredictable we tend to like law better than we like mercy because mercy is always unpredictable it always surprises us and sun and rain are unpredictable I mean unless you live in California then the sun is very predictable isn't it but overall, we, we don't know if the sun is going to shine the right amount and if the rain's going to rain. And it's bad for our product. You know what we can do for food? We can create machinery that can make our food. And then we don't have to trust in the sun and the rain anymore. So they did. And over the next 40 years, 
By 1990, they had eradicated the, farm, the farmer from America. By 1990, in the last turn of the crank, he writes, Wendell Berry writes and tells us that in the United States of America, we went from one-third of our nation's population lived on the land they farmed and ate the produce from that land. By 1990, less than 2% of the American population were farmers, and less than 1% of that 2% lived on the land that they farmed and ate the produce from that land. And the, I mean, the reason that's important to say is because would you want to eat the food from a farmer who gives it to you and says, you eat it, I wouldn't. And Wendell Berry prophesies in 1990, in its prophecy, over our nation. One day in the future, and it will not be long, the consumers in American society will revolt and they'll demand for farmers again. They'll realize that our need for certainty is poisoning us. Instead of a God who's a potter who knows us by name, shaping and forming us in his mysterious and merciful ways, we'd rather have a machine providing for us. Instead of trust, right, we'd rather have certainty. They'll realize certainty, our need for certainty is poisoning us and we'll cry out, Get rid of the machinery and give us back the farmer again. In the last 10, 15 years, you can see that happening in America. But then he says this, and this is where the church comes in. Like preachers, like poets, like prophets, like musicians, Farmers cannot be trained quickly. They have to be raised to the trade. Why do we worship together? Why do we come together? And what does this have to do with why I had you sit down? How do you raise up a poet in our society? When you when you tell the whole world that if you can't be understood quickly, it doesn't make any sense and it's useless. How do we raise up children to be poets? How, do we how are you gonna raise up prophets in this house if every child needs to prophesy popular understanding? You raise up prophets, you raise up preachers, you raise up poets, right, over a long journey. You raise up poets by saying, wow, that's amazing. Love does have a hole in it. And then what do you do? You say, whew, what does that mean? And then you think about what it means. And then you tell her later, wow, this is what I think it means. But maybe it means even more than that. I think a lot of people are bound by anxiety because you don't know how to live in the machine. But God never gave us a world to be a machine. God has always been like Jesus. And his mercy is extended toward us. And what's he doing? He's saying, oh yeah, my people, my children, what, what's happening in our day? I see it all over the world. Families are raising up poets and preachers and prophets. Churches are raising up musicians and poets and preachers and prophets. Again, we're not just a machine. Now, I'd like to be a machine as much as most of us would like to be a machine. There's certain people that I would love to. <laughs> Can't we just put those people on the assembly line? <laughs> Have them come out better? 
at least according to my preference. I remember when I was a boy, I, could, we, I was praying for Bon Jovi to get saved. Oh, God, save Bon Jovi, because if Bon Jovi could get saved, then the whole world would know about Jesus. I didn't even realize I was praying for his destruction of his entire career. Praying for Bon But that was how simple it was. I just wanted a machine. This isn't what God's doing. The Holy Spirit is setting captives free, captive by the big machine. Say, Lord, so Lord, we just say that. Raise up farmers right here. Liberate the soil. What, what, does, it, what does it mean? It means uh, raise up people who care more about the soil than they do about the product. What does it mean? It means we are not a people of buying and selling. We are a people of sowing and reaping. What does it mean? It means that you belong. It means that I belong. You know how, if I listen to the voice of machine farmers, anointed, Upton's anointed, he's not anointed, he's anointed, probably in just one night of ministry. Woo, anointed, not anointed, anointed, not anointed. This is the way of humanity. This is the thing. Those kind of people, they need, their insides are going like this. They don't even know how to speak word of prophecy or see you. I just want to declare over each person in this room, Jesus sees you. Commerce is not what defines your value. Jesus sees you. I remember old men when I was a young boy saying, don't worry about your career, Jason. Just worry about integrity and character. Those old men made farmers and poets and prophets preachers, world changers. Today, is that what we're speaking? Jesus sees you. Jesus sees you. Jesus sees every little thing you do. What you do matters. Lord, raise them up, right? Farmers. There was a time not long ago when the sun did shine and the sower sowed and the rain did rain and the crops did grow. It was a time before machinery, a time before certainty, a time before we bought the lie, a time before the farmer died when we had trusting hearts and human soul. It was a time not very long ago. I'm going to sing this over us. And you sing along or listen along or whatever, you know.
little faith can move the mountains How much faith will it take to In all of the pain we're in Reach out to the world again Keep hold Thank you, Jesus. It's a powerful night, amen? Listen, as we close, uh, two things I want to say. Number one, Jason has some CDs in the lobby. Please uh, stop by and purchase some of his music. Um, there's no reason for him to take those back home. We had an incredible night with God. Let's, let's take it home with us, amen? And number two, um, we didn't charge for this night of worship or this event on purpose because 
We're going to take up an offering, and 100% of what comes in tonight is going to go to a ministry called the Cure Foundation. It's located in Cebu, Philippines. I happen to personally know the founders of this foundation and the director that is running this ministry. And this ministry specializes in ministering to young girls who have been rescued from sex trafficking. These girls are 12 years and under. The youngest is two years old. And they were rescued and placed in cottages that this church helped to build. And they're struggling just to meet their operating budget. And this is a very powerful ministry. I know it personally. We have teams that go there. And the Lord impressed upon us to raise their entire year's operating budget and to go beyond that and bless them so that we can bless their staff and we can bless these girls. And so we're going to put some offering buckets here in the front. And I'm going to ask everyone to just give something. Normally, you would have to be, you would have to pay a cover charge to come in to something that cost a lot of money like this tonight. It cost us a lot of money to bring this event and to put this on. But we're doing it because we want to sow into you and we want to sow into the Cure Foundation. So we're just going to ask that you just do whatever is on your heart. And 100% of this money is going to go to the Cure Foundation. If you want to give by, by text, you can do that. All you have to do is uh, text that number there and put cure and all of this is going to go to this foundation to help minister to these young girls so as we close tonight i'm going to invite you to to do that and let's all stand to our feet and let's go ahead and put the buckets across the front here <clears throat> thank you jesus Tonight was a very powerful night of ministry. I love the fact that Jason Upton doesn't just sing songs, he ministers. That his songs are ministry to us. I don't know about you, but I feel like something broke open here tonight. And there's a freedom in the atmosphere, there's an open heaven. And you're not gonna leave here the same that you came. God's done something tonight. If you were listening to anything he said, the Holy Spirit grabbed your heart. We had a powerful night of ministry. And we thank you, Jason, for being with us and for your band for coming. And you guys were awesome. Amen. I, I can tell you, we had lunch, we had lunch with them earlier they are the real deal. Uh, what you heard tonight, this is, they are real. This is all the way through. And I'm just so grateful that God is raising up prophets. He is, he's really a prophet that God is using through the medium of music and the Word of God to bring correction in the body of Christ, to bring wholeness, to bring healing. And we praise God, Jason, your ministry is, is powerful. And I believe that it's going to continue to grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Well, Lord, we are so grateful to you for all your wonderful blessings. And Lord, we just pray right now for Jason and for his uh, team, Lord, his band, his musicians, as they as they travel, Lord, and the sound persons, Lord, we just thank you, God, as, as they travel back, Lord, to where you're taking them next and for their families. We just pray your grace upon them, Lord. We thank you, Father, that they are giving themselves to the work of God. And, Lord, they're calling the body of Christ to come up higher. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We don't have to get caught up in the machine and the church has become a machine has become a business and we don't have to get caught up into that but we can go back to the heart of worship to the heart of ministry it's all about you and it's about 
ministering to your people and it's about coming up a little higher and having that relationship that you have called us to. You're calling us unto yourself and we're so grateful. We're so thankful, Father, for this night of worship and night of an encounter with you. And Lord, I thank you for this offering that has been given tonight. Father, we thank you for the generosity of your people that are going to make a difference in the lives of these young ladies and many more that are still coming into this program. Father, we pray for not only healing, we pray for restoration in these young ladies. We pray for wholeness. We pray, Father, that they would know the love of Jesus and they would know that people care and love them. And Father, you would bring them into complete wholeness in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, God bless you. You are dismissed. Thank you for being with us tonight.